Thanks for joining me again. Today, we're gonna get dirty. We're gonna uh, mill the part out of brass or bronze or whatever that piece is. I've actually already done it. That's why the machine's a bit dirty right now. This is after some cleaning, but it's still dirty. If you are a machinist, you will probably want to look away. In this video, I do a lot of boneheaded things. I think I catch, I don't know, four different crashes on video. I destroy my bits. Uh, it, it's a mess, and the final product, if you're a machinist, probably isn't that great. But to me, it's wonderful and glorious and beautiful because it exists and it didn't before I started. So, let's get started on the bronze piece that, uh, that I modeled for the phone stand. Let's make it happen. I screwed with so many settings, just trying things out, seeing how it worked. Again, going back to NYC CNC and looking at his videos over and over and over. And, um, you know, I figured out the processes, but the feeds and speeds were still a mystery to me. So I decided to just dive in with stuff that seemed like it sort of made sense. And here we go. So the first thing I did, I, I had exported the entire file. I was going to do the whole part at once. And you can see my face starts off with a problem. My part's not completely flat or my face isn't deep enough. And here in a moment, we get the first crash. And here we go. Bam. Ugh. So I went back and I did some more face. And you can see me spraying this with a spray bottle full of coolant and hitting it with compressed air. I thought I was doing this so I could get a prettier video. Now, on the first step that I take to actually shaping this, I do a uh, 2D contour. This is what it's supposed to do. This is a 1 8 inch, or I mean a 3 8 inch 4 flute because I destroyed my 2 flute. And crash again. That's what the default settings infusion for bronze and here we go and another crash with some more settings and i start to actually make some headway by adjusting things and chunk it stops again so at this point i'm actually making some headway and i realize that spraying this thing uh, with the hand sprayer is idiotic and i'm just being a moron look at that steam because everything's so hot so i turn everything down and I go hook up my flood coolant and at this point I'm also doing each step individually and with flood coolant it's much better you'll notice I only had a dribble coming out there but I remedy that in a moment after this first operation The next operation is this big pocket. I just want to do a 3D adaptive clearing or a pocket. I don't remember. I, I want to clear out all of this material so that I can get in there and make it smooth. That's what it's supposed to do. And here's what it did on the machine. That actually went fairly uneventfully. Then there was this bit left over I couldn't get rid of with a 2D, so I did a 3D adaptive to just clear out this little bit of material that seemed like it was going to be too much. And um, it decided to go hit some other spots too. I should have limited that. That went fairly uneventfully. The next step was a 2D contour to get that lower face and the outside edge down to a nicer finish. 
I had some issues with this that I'll discuss in the end. You don't see them here because I, uh, I goofed some stuff. Anyway, I'll show you at the end. You'll see exactly what the problem was. But this went more or less without issue. It, there was one major issue where the shoulder was rubbing because I had the tool modeled incorrectly. But the two flutes cut so much better than four flutes. The next operation was to come in with a ball end mill and round out that whole sidewall. And I was hoping for a nice smooth finish and I'm fairly pleased with what I got. Obviously there's still tooling marks and I could do much better, but it turned out pretty well. I really should have finished the bottom floor though. It was, uh, it still has like a half thou left. After that, I did a simple chamfer with a little three millimeter ball end that just goes around that pocket and then around the, uh, the tops of all this so that it's nice and not sharp. And there was one big issue with this right here that you should have spotted right there, but I did not. And I'll show you that later. And then to finish this whole thing off, I flipped the part over. I switched my origin point to right here on this hook. It was an, it was this last place I still had a hook I could actually, or a spot that I could actually go to. And I did a face and then a chamfer. And this was fairly uneventful as well once I figured so, some stuff out. Now the face, my step over was too big so it left these ridges that I ended up just manually firing up the spindle and jogging back over to get rid of these ridges. And you can kind of see the difference in, uh, in movement here whenever I switch to manual after I blow off the material. And then it was done. There were chips everywhere. This was after I'd already scooped chips away four or five times. I was amazed at the amount of chips that this produced. I have a box full of these chips now. I, I was really not aware of how many chips this would produce. There I am checking it out. Now let's take a closer look at this. Okay, let's check out this piece, but first, if you're watching, you probably see these scrub marks on here. It, it, this was starting to rust, like, super quick, so I scrubbed it down, and I've been coating it, and I used WD-40, and then I used this stuff called Frog Lube, and I'm still a bit worried that it's going to start rusting again. I don't know, I mean, like, it was super quick. Anyway, next topic. This thing. Okay, let's start with all of the stuff that I learned and noticed that could have been better uh, from the first operations. So I was crashing the bit because I had the wrong feeds and speeds. I was using the defaults in Fusion and then I used the default uh, Tormach example from Fusion. And then I Googled it and found some. And you know, if I was smart, I would have just started right off the bat using a calculator or the machinist handbook or something. I guess I'm not that smart. But what I ended up doing was finding some feeds and speeds online for brass for a four flute, which I realized a two flute would have been better, but I destroyed my two flute uh, goofing around before I even made my first part. Um, so I loaded those default settings, I put it in, and then I actually, in the controller on the machine, slowed my feed rate down. And so I was going really slow, and I'm sure I was rubbing, and I was producing way too much heat. Then I was an idiot for spraying that spray bottle instead of just using my flood cooling, because I know it was way too hot. but 
you live and you learn, right? Now I know not to do that. Um, so that first operation went more or less after I got all of the crashes out of the way without a hitch. The second operation was clearing out this pocket, and I don't recall having any problem with that operation except that I, I did the option of leaving stock behind so that I could finish it later. And then when I came back to it later, I'd screwed with the, with the um, file so much, I couldn't figure out how to get back and actually take out this last bit of stock. So there's a raised section here that's, that's not optimal. It would be better if it was flat to the bottom. And then there's even a little notch taken out where my ball end mill came through. Uh, yeah. I don't know what I goofed. It looked like it would be easy to come back and, and finish that, but I couldn't see an obvious way. Uh, after that was another 2D contour to face this off. Oh, no, 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 I had to do a 3D adaptive because the 2D contour left this notch here and I couldn't get rid of that, so I went back and I did a 3D adaptive to clear that out so that the next 2D contour wouldn't be running into it. And then I did a 2D contour and it faced this off and it faced this off, which I'm happy with, even though there's tool marks. I'm happy with it. I don't know why I used such a small mill for that. I should have used a bigger mill, but oh well. Uh, and then the 2D adaptive contour that went around, I used the, the eighth inch because it had to be small to get into this pocket. But here's a big goof, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on video. I used the default fusion model, which is a, a straight shaft that's an eighth inch. Mine wasn't. Mine's the one that came with the Tormach, which has this big 3 8 inch shoulder on it. And so when I got down this deep, the shoulder was actually rubbing here, and you can see that, I guess that's a chatter mark. I don't know. I'm still learning this stuff. You can see the markings all along that bottom end where, where the finish isn't as nice. So if I were redoing this, I would probably, you know, do the top half and then do the bottom half with a second operation um, after I flipped it over. Uh, following that up, I took a ball nose end mill and finished this, this side in here. And I love this surface finish. I don't remember what operation I used. I love this surface finish down to a certain point, but then it kind of falls apart on the inside here where I've got that extra stock. I, you know, I, I could probably do like a parallel or something and clean that up still, but I'm not going to screw with it. It's good enough as is. Then after that, I did a chamfer on this whole, every top surface and I ran into a problem. Right here, uh, it was trying to chamfer, you know, it chamfered up here, around here, and then it wanted to come down and chamfer this edge, and it just jammed that bit right in there. And you would normally see that in a uh, infusion, but I just overlooked it. Um, and so to avoid that, as it came around, I just manually stopped it once it got to here, because that's all gonna be kinda hidden. I don't need to worry about it right here, having a chamfer, so I just stopped it. Then, I flipped it over and I did the point of origin to this corner because it was a convenient corner for me to do. Um, and then I faced it. I went back over manually because my step over was too big. And I ground down those spots where the, uh, where the, the little ridge was left from the step over. And then I did a chamfer. And if you look real close on this chamfer, you can see it starts off beautifully up here. But as it gets down to here, away from my registration point, it drifts over uh, almost like two millimeters there and off of the edge over here. So this isn't even chamfered right here. And that's because my vise wasn't uh, parallel to the head of the machine. Super dumb beginner mistake. I know, I even know to fix that, but I, had, I didn't, I guess. Um, I should go back in and make, when I remount my vise, I need to make sure it's parallel to my X and, and Y. So that's off, but it's not a big deal. It's okay with me. And there it is. There's my first part. That's freaking exciting. So even despite all of those problems that I just listed, I think it's amazing. See, this represents one of the important milestones of learning a new skill. 
Uh, I don't have like a set concrete way, but the first things are knowing how to like turn on your tool and what the basic functions are. And then the second part is the ability to get a job done, even if it's not that great of a version. Like, uh, you know, the, the Jake the dog from Adventure Time says, being kind of cruddy at something is the first step to being sort of all right at something. I take that to heart. And in my opinion, this is amazing. Like, this was just a chunk of brass or bronze, and now it's this thing. And sure, it's got all these little problems and, and inefficiencies and issues that a machinist would look at and, and scoff at, you know, or, or throw in the parts bin. But for me, as what my second attempt at actually milling, um, this is uh, this is exciting. This is super exciting. Like, I, I'm overjoyed with the ability to be able to do this. Now I just need to figure out how to do this a little bit less crappily. So I guess that's the next step. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.